Welcome to part five of module two, which is evaluating the health system in Australia in terms of acceptability. So this is the final part of module two in the final video. Acceptability of the healthcare system is a final important measure of its evaluation. This evaluation occurs from the views of one, the patient, two, the community, and three, the service providers. Acceptability of the healthcare service is of particular importance in the public hospital setting where funding and political impl implications can ensue. To be acceptable, the healthcare system should operate both fairly and ethically. Your first task is to describe the four key ethical principles as defined by Beauchamp and Childress. You can access this information in one of two ways, by referring to the textbook by these authors or by conducting a simple Google search. Just type Beauchamp and Childress 2001 into the search bar and you will be able to find reference to the four ethical principles. Good luck with your search. Patient and provider satisfaction are ways in which the acceptability of the health system can be evaluated. One limiting factor in fully evaluating patient satisfaction is the lack of a nationally adopted questionnaire which serves to systematically evaluate patient experiences. Nevertheless, Likert scales are adopted where patients rank their satisfaction with a particular health service from one to five. And I'm sure you've all had the pleasure of filling in Likert scales before. Patient experiences, however, are usually gleaned from the use of questionnaires. And one method by which patient experiences are monitored is via the number of complaints which patients lodge with their hospital. Aside from Likert scale measures or completing complaints forms, other avenues do exist which enable patients a voice about their satisfaction with or acceptability of their health provider or health service. For example, there are organisations that have been funded by the Commonwealth Government, for example, the Consumers Health Forum, which assist with dealing with customer concerns. The My Hospitals website has also been developed for consumers to review the efficacy, efficiency, safety and quality of the services which major hospitals are providing. What I'd like you to do is access the My Hospitals website to find out how this initiative works. We'll look at this in a little bit more detail later. To give you a bit of context to your own experience with this, at the IND hospital, patients are encouraged to give feedback about the service that they've received. And you might have noticed these feedback forms in the hospital during your clinical pl placement. I have provided you with a link to this brochure, but you can see here just an excerpt from the brochure itself. Task two of part five relates directly to the feedback from the IND hospital, the feedback form that I mentioned in the previous slide. So you need to answer three questions. One, what is the role of the consumer liaison officer at the IND hospital? You'll be able to find the information on the actual patient feedback form. Two, review the patient feedback form provided by the IND and determine what happens to this information once it's lodged by the patient. So in other words, what is the order of proceeding action that happens that the hospital takes? And three, compare the pros and cons of employing a patient advocate of your own for your own health needs. The reference by Croker called Patient Ad Advocate by Your Side, of which you have a link, will give you more information about actually employing a patient advocate and what that could mean for you as a patient. A few slides back, I mentioned the My Hospitals website as a method for evaluating health services. Your next task for this module is to work through the following questions. And we are specifically going to have a look at one Victorian hospital, St. Vincent's Hospital. So firstly, I want you to visit the My Hospitals website, look at the safety and quality section for St. Vincent's Hospital, the public hospital in Fitzroy, Victoria. How does this compare to the national benchmark? What you need to do is simply go to the website and type in St. Vincent's Hospital into the search bar. Two, 
In the services provided section for this hospital in the My, Web, uh, My Hospital's uh, website, note the waiting times in the emergency department. For which cases does this hospital's waiting time exceed those of the national average? I want you to explain why you think this might be the case. And finally, three, what is the limiting factor of the My Hospital site to consumers of these health services? Explain this. In other words, in what way or what ways might this site be improved to benefit those accessing healthcare by these providers? Did you have trouble navigating through the site? Could you imagine if someone's vision impaired and needs to access the site? Think about those, those broader issues. This figure here, adapted from Duckett and Wilcox, summarises some of the information that you've read so far. You will note here that um, in addition to acceptability, equity and quality, efficiency is um, shown, but also effectiveness is shown as a subset of efficiency. But we've talked about it somewhat separately so far. Don't forget that there are other subsets of efficient efficiency and that there exist barriers to equity in healthcare also. So task four, what I'd like you to do now is alter this figure to further define the elements where appropriate. So for example, dynamic efficiency is not shown in the figure and neither are the subsets of acceptability or the potential barriers to equity in access. This activity is going to assist you in consolidating the information presented so far. So just draw on the diagram and add those additional points that are not there. So the reform of the Australian healthcare system is an ongoing process. And by measuring outcomes like those noted here, aligned changes can therefore be developed. One can acknowledge that it's not a simple process to create a patient-centred approach to health care, and that's quite evident. Feedback is important in the reform of the system, and this should really be encouraged. Feedback includes that from consumers or patients and also practitioners in the field. One thing that should be noted, however, is that reform in healthcare is a multifaceted process which is shaped and influenced by by socio-political aspects. And your final task for this section, task five, is in summary to write a one to, one to two sentence summary describing what an efficient patient-centered health service would be like for you. So consider what you have read in this module and the experience you, experiences you have had so far as a consumer of the system, that is a patient, and also as a student allied health professional in the ophthalmic orthoptic setting. We've now come to the end of module two. Please revisit the key concepts related to this module to ensure you've covered everything. Module three will be exploring the burden of eye disease.